Alright, we're winning. We're winning. Sweet. Thank you for the freaking patience. You're recording the video for sure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you want to look and make sure. <laughs> I just think we got just want to make sure that we're like a red dot. That's it. Alright, I see red. We're 33 seconds in. Okay. Boom! Dude, where's Riley? We're freaking out. I don't know how this thing goes. Freaking missing Riley. We are in the home studio with our beautiful and special guest, Gabe. Man, I've been honored to, I'm not even speaking of my mic when I had one job. <laughs> Dang, dude. This is, see, mobile, I'm like thrown off. Special's so, accurate, but I don't yeah. know about beautiful. Sophie's here, and it's just threw me off. Um, Gabe, very talented. Uh, you've been very, very, very successful in the YouTube platform, event hosting. Um, I mean, an influencer, driving events, hosting events, attending events, driving events, and you're 25. That's fucking crazy. Thanks, brother. It's a lot going on at a young age. <laughs> Yes, sir. I, I make it that way, unfortunately. Why is that unfortunate? Uh, it's a lot of stress, but mm. it's like a paradox. It's like, I love it, but it's so stressful at the same time, but I love it. I feel like you can relate to that. Yeah, for sure. It's self-induced. I tried to explain it to somebody once. I was like, I feel like I'm like a, a uh, what is it? I said I was like a, a gambler, but I don't go to the casino. But like, I continue just to wager everything and okay. put it all on the line. And then, I'm, oh, a degenerate gambler that doesn't go to the casino. It's so like one that's like, dude, you need to leave the table and take... Go take a nap. Yeah. You know, so you know what's funny? That's actually a great segue. So like, I love business topics, right? And there's a quote by Jeff Bezos, and the quote goes something like, it's like, if you're playing baseball, right, you can hit a home run, but the most you're going to get is four runs out of it, right? There's, you know, you can do little four runs. I don't know sports very much, but that's how the quote goes. Well, in business, right, sometimes you can hit a home run that gives you a thousand runs. Baseball doesn't have those odds. So he said in business, you always always want to take the risk when it makes sense because you can score a thousand home runs. I thought that was super interesting. So don't sleep tonight, do the Gary Vee approach and yeah. just like work through it. 100%. 100%. Don't be lazy, people. Yeah. No, sorry. I wasn't talking to you. But anyways, just <laughs> wanted to mention that. But yes, I, I feel that. And that's how I felt with YouTube, dude. Like Doing YouTube. It was like, uh, I feel like I was constantly in a casino. Because I would put out content that I thought was really good, but at the end of the day, it's like, if the algorithm slash viewers didn't want to watch it, it's like, is it really good? If it doesn't get views? So I start chasing views, and it was kind of a casino. But anyways, I feel, I can relate to that for sure. So it's so weird. YouTube's just, I guess that's any social media platform, but YouTube for sure, because it takes a lot of time because of the video aspect, but it's just a revolving door. It's like you don't have, it never ends. Yeah, and just the cycle just resets. It's like, I mean, when the daily vlogging was really relevant, I know um, it was probably worse. And now it's like you don't have to daily vlog necessarily. But dang, dude, like just trying to come up with content, put a story on and make it quality and do it time after time after time after time after time. Well, I, don't, I don't know if YouTube hits the car scene like it does the bike scene, but like a lot of the like the like Brian touches on it in a bunch of his videos. It, the second someone does a wheelie, it used to be like accepted, but the second someone does a wheelie in a video, that video is immediately demonetized now. And yeah. now with um, Jigsaw Bro, sure. they're cracking down on his speed. So speed used to be the thing that gets him paid. And now if they, they he has to cover up his uh, speedometer or else the, it'll flag the video and won't even let him upload them, some of them anymore. Is that YouTube automatically doing that? Or is that a person from YouTube? Doing um, that? From my understanding, it's a person. Like, I, I could, be, mis consumer, I could like, be mistaking this, like, but I think you can choose to have a robot view it or a person view it, like to like before it goes up in order to verify that it's safe to to upload or it's safe for an audience. Um, but I could like I could be mistaken on that part. That's interesting. What a worthless job for that human. It's just like ah, you're not gonna make money, creator. Well, sorry, <laughs> TikTok's way worse though. In what um, way? Like so, I, I have seventy thousand followers on TikTok on the Novice Garage. TikTok account, which is my YouTube channel. Um, it, TikTok account for the YouTube channel, but they're really bad. Like I would post videos of us doing our thing, which is like donuts and drifting, not even on the street, right? On a track or in a parking lot where we have permission, they would instantly, they won't even demonetize it, they just take it down. What was the Hard justification again? Wasn't that like a verbiage they'd stamped with? It? Community guidelines. That's uh, it. Yeah, I, I learned yeah. real quick on the TikTok of yeah. mine, even with doing the stuff in the parking lots that I have to put Hashtag professional, hashtag closed <laughs> course, and hashtag stuntman, or else my videos don't get uploaded. That's the trick. Yeah, yeah. Seriously? I have to, I have to wow. do the hashtag and everything, and then it puts that disclaimer at the bottom of your video that says, uh, "These actions, this video could be dangerous, but they're performed by professionals." Okay. So I had to start doing that in every, in, in every like facet of it. I never figured that part out. Apparently. Do you think that would work with what you're doing? 
Uh, I mean, I'm a, hooligan, I'm a hooligan with my stuff that I post, <laughs> so if they're letting me do it, then I feel like his stuff should be a little bit more clean cut. Yeah, I'm sorry, probably. that's Sophie totally interrupted. She's, She's too much, I can like, figure star. out a situation. <laughs> <laughs> but Instagram, man, like, I can post pretty much, I mean, we're not too, I used to be a lot more rowdy. I'm more grown up now, but we don't have any problems with Instagram. Zero. I totally feel like we're shadow banned. And I, I like, really? I, dude, yeah. our engagement is I see is why so you say that, whack. though. And dude, we've never paid for followers or did any of that like fake busy BS. So like it never should have messed with our analytics or our organic growth. Yeah. And it's just trash. Yeah. Well, I, I will say one thing. So like I did YouTube for seven years and I, I, I grew the channel Novice Garage like 230,000 subscribers. So I had to like get really in depth with what the algorithm is. And I think a huge misconception, especially with Instagram is like, people think if they do this trend or use this trending audio that they're instantly gonna get views, right? And I think what people don't understand, my understanding of it, is the algorithm simply serves to give people what they want. That's it. So if you're putting out content that people actually wanna consume consistently, the likelihood of the algorithm favoring your content goes up. Cause you gotta think about, right? These companies that own these platforms, Google, Facebook, right? They use these free platforms to sell advertisers ad space, right? So you gotta think like, I always look at intentions with companies, right? What's their intention? Well, if it's a free platform and they're using it to serve ads, they want people to spend the most amount of time on those platforms. So therefore they create an algorithm, we're going deep. <laughs> they, no, I do it. I do it, I'm <laughs> learning. I was just trying to hide her from one of you. No, you're good, she's chilling out. But they make, they make an algorithm, right? To basically serve the purpose of, Danzy, how much time do you spend on Instagram per day? Oh, any, any break I get, I'm scrolling through, right. just trying to watch the videos. And you're trying to watch videos because more like every day it's probably you feel like the content gets better and better in a way right because it's like the algorithm's learning what you want and it shows you more of it right yeah so like that's what the algorithm serves but then again it's like the content that you're consuming typically it's like the one percent of one percent of the thousands of videos that get uploaded every day right there's so many people uploading videos a lot of them are decent but like the stuff that goes viral and gets millions of views Something about it, people like it. The algorithm sees that. And the algorithm's like, okay, well, if people watch this and they're they're liking it, they're they're spending time on the platform. We're gonna push this video to more users. So that's the way I kind of learned the algorithm works in a nutshell. I'm sure every platform's slightly different, but that's basically the gist of it. So I feel like it makes sense. Like it would almost work for every platform, not just mm -hmm. YouTube. So it does seem like that's versatile. Like trends would change, but mm -hmm. the overall formula of they're just trying to keep people in the app that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. So that's like the biggest thing I see is like, man, my videos aren't going viral. It's like, are you putting out actual good content? And good is subjective. If I think my content's good, it doesn't matter. It's the viewer. I'm right? getting old, bro. I'm so starting to get more irritated when I see like the most thrown together content. It's like, just like a random person like running up and like farting and then like running away. <laughs> and it's got like 10 trillion views. And it's like, what? That, that, that's what broke the internet? Well, dude, a good example of it is quality. So we have two buddies, uh, Jared and Mason, and shoot, a month ago, Mason only had, he was like posting on his story, oh, I thank God for the 2,000 followers that I have. And then looking at him the other day, he's at like, <clears throat> I want to say almost 50,000 followers. And then Jared's about to hit 100,000 followers on Instagram just within the last, like they've just blown up within the last year, but they got linked up with, um, with Etsy and they're putting out quality shot content and it just yep. looks like it was filmed on a movie set every yep. single time and it's just getting just exploding it's pretty crazy that's awesome but i wonder like how many years they have before this explosion phase of just like eating crap <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean like the hard like part is, views you know the hard part and i'm not talking on their situation because i love both those dudes tremendously they're really cool but it's like there's a scale of like how long can you continue to produce content without generating revenue that's not like putting you behind Cause like, I know sure. they have like girls yeah. and female girlfriends and friends are like in that industry. So it's like, can you continue to produce mm -hmm. uh, high quality content affordable without retaining income? Yeah. And that's like, as you're trying to get through some of these layers of social media and, and large following, it's like, you're not making money until you mm -hmm. really can start pushing some numbers. And I hope they continue to go and I hope it yeah. works out for them. But just in, in like that formula, it's fucking. Well, and Instagram doesn't pay like YouTube does. YouTube pays for views, but Instagram is kind of, it's definitely different. I've heard, I've heard people just have a harder time getting monetized and actually getting getting paid off of Instagram, so. Well, that's the thing, bro, is like, yes, there's a formula, but like what people don't understand is it's not about figuring out the formula. It's about creating content that people want to watch on repeat. 
I'm about to get on Patreon, dude. I was watching. Uh, I, I'm not trying to pivot, but so I hope this. No, you're good. Uh, no, you're good. The Shane and Matt and Shane podcast. I think me and you talk about it quite often. I, I love the guys. Love them as comedians. Love them as podcasters. Apparently, they're like one of the top two or three earners on Patreon. Like that's fucking cool. And isn't that model like it's it's like a step a step above a GoFundMe, right? Because it's like you're paying us a it's like an OnlyFans well, like PG. Well, so right? it's almost like a social platform, in my opinion. It's almost okay. like a social platform of its own. It's like, instead of Facebook where I just follow you, mm-hmm. it's like I'm now paying $10 a month to follow you and see the content you put on there. So GoFundMe is like, exclusive. hey, yeah. I got into a right. wreck and I need money or hey, you know, I need, I need a leg surgery or people are fucking, I want my tattoo done. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, you see I need money. Give me yeah. money. <laughs> kind of. I hate to say it, you know, because yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have like sure. GoFundMe for a family member, a funeral. There's emergency Fair. situations. Fair. But for every emergency situation, there's... 10 chicks like, I'm just trying to go to Vegas for my 30th birthday. Um, which that could be a podcast in its own, just going yeah. into the deep dive of, of that slum. But um, so to me, uh, Patreon is like where your followers are putting their money down and they're not yeah. just following on a free platform, but then you're putting exclusive content. So what a lot of people do, and I love the guy from Channel 5 that used to be no gas or all gas, no breaks. Um, or a lot of these podcasters, they'll do like a intriguing interview or Stiff Stocks. I think Stiff Stocks does it too. Trevor Wallace. Um, They'll like do a two hour interview or a two hour session and the first hour will be on YouTube and then the second hour is when they really start hitting the juicy topics. Mm, interesting. Or like you'll say this crazy story, you'll talk about like running not and this is putting this on you, but like maybe somebody's running from the cops and they like lead yeah. you up and they're like, Yeah, but you gotta go to the Patreon to see the second part. Yeah. Hundred percent. Channel five, he'll do like crazy. He just did this one like cross and he literally like dr- walked into Mexico and then like coyote his way back. And like certain parts that were recorded like high intensity, he only put on his Patreon. Not only because YouTube would suppress it, so it wouldn't be as uh, ROI. Sure. But then yeah. um, his exclusive people really got to see it. So, like, I think there was one part he really got, like, they made it across. They made the freaking journey. But then when, as soon as they popped up on the side of Texas, um, like, border agents were following the last few miles, and they scooped him up, and he got detained for a few days. Dang. Well, Patreon also offers, wow. like... Um people pay for it because it gives you a um, a direct contact it, it allows you to message the person that you're following and you can have like interaction back and forth and be a little bit more involved in the content i didn't know that i mean yeah. i guess all, all <clears throat> platforms have a messaging like yeah like, um, ryan like sickler does the honeydew he said calls it his honeydew with y'all and he has <laughs> his patreon uh followers like send in stories and that like they make a whole other look more whole other this. podcast out of it. it's pretty crazy it's pretty cool i like it because I think the Matt and Shane, like, they were saying they had, like, 70,000 subscribers. And, like, that's... Okay, so don't quote me on these numbers. I listen to a lot of content. I look into a lot of influential, tr- influential trends. But if they had 70,000 and they're one of the top earners, like, that's pretty gangster. But if you have 70,000 people throwing down 5 to 10 bucks a month, and it's, like, all they're doing is sitting down four times a month and doing yeah. something like this in, I think, Shane's living room or something. Yeah. That's fucking gnarly. No, hundred percent. I'm sure they run it like a business, though. Like I'm yeah. sure they have a schedule and people with roles and all that kind of thing. Would, no, you're think. right. Yeah, you, yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. And I, I'm not trying to make it yeah. seem easy. I'm sure, just like, sure, sure. Yeah. I'm just like, fuck, man. Yeah. To me, that's like being the recording artist that doesn't sign to a label, but you're you're in the same lane, booking big shows, doing arenas. Like you're putting up that type of numbers, and you're kind of a free agent. Like hats off to you, man. And not to get on a tangent, but I'm passionate about this, and I kind of want to talk about it, and especially with y'all. Hoonigan, bro. Look at it. It's such a corporate shell. Have you looked at their website lately? Are, are you saying like, like you know, what, what's it like BC, you know, or AC uh, after Ken Block? So it'd be like... um, It's not... Well, they, a, AK, I guess it would be. Yeah, they yeah, made yeah. the deal with Tire Stacks or whatever that tire company is. But like if you go to Hoonigan.com, it's literally like trying to sell you a lift kit for a Ford Raptor right now. Oh, uh, and this this is like after Ken passed, right? Well, I, so from my understanding, the deal happened and yeah. then it was already in this transition. Yeah. But now it's like, I, th- I think, and this is just my gathered opinion, not context, evidence, concrete. Um, I think after he passed, it kind of let them really run it into the ground. And now it got to the point from, and I've looked into it a lot. So I, I, if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. Oh, whatever. That's a good topic. Uh, from my understanding, the freaking Wheel and Tire Company now changed their name to Hoonigan. So, like, yeah. like, this Wheel and Tire Company that's known for, like, buying up other companies right. bought Hoonigan. Wall Ken was alive. Correct. Yes, Wall Ken was like, alive. Yes, I think it was 2021. That. Yeah. And so then now they've gotten to the point where they even changed their name. And if you go to Hoonigan.com, it's like 
the, a picture of their distribution warehouse and like some guy yeah. like take welding something and, like <laughs> not like a car like like a, you know what i mean like a an industrial part it looks like a slideshow like you just got hired at like a freaking warehouse over there off of 170. It's just, it's it's kind of nasty, bro. And so for me, from careless, I'm more enthusiastic because I don't ever want to let that happen. But then it's like, man, this is like, now I kind of feel older because now it's like the brands I used to look up to, I've been around, we've kind of worked with them, brushed shoulders with them, and now they've even gone corporate. So it's like watched in over a decade, like the whole thing play out in front of me. And I never would have projected Hoonigan to become that. I mean, when they got, when they got into, uh, give me attention, Zoomies, is that a broccoli? Yeah. Dude, that's sick. Uh, it tastes like broccoli? I wish. I'll try it. Dancy, you want to try it? So Sophie's the real star. Right? No this shit, episode. Sign up for the Patreon. She needs food. Uh, <laughs> no, she's fine. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. The Hoonigan thing, it's, it's extremely interesting to me. And uh, Yeah, let's talk about it. I, I have some thoughts on it. I mean, it's just crazy because we, yeah. we did Drift Week. And so we worked side by side with Hurt and Vin and like some of those guys. And that was like a dream come true when... When, uh, like, somehow accidentally hurt, like, they tried to prank hurt, but hurt gave something to me as a gift, and it ended up, like, pranking me, so, like, there was an inside joke between me and hurt, and, like, it was just, like, we really got to bond yeah, with those guys. Cool. So, he was into these thing called, like, Cactus Coolers. Uh -huh. It's, like, a California soda, like, I guess, like, I don't, it's, like, an off-brand soda that they all drink. So, I guess hurt loves Cactus Coolers, and, uh... It's not off-brand anymore. Yeah, no shit. It's the brain. bougie stuff. Yeah. But they like opened up this twelve pack case and stuffed it with the diet cokes, and then taped it back together so it looked like it wasn't tampered with. And then like her somehow I guess like was drink like hey you should try these <laughs> drinks. And then he was like yo you can have a case. And then he brought me a case. And I opened it up and I was like ah oh, this this motherfucker punked me. And I like told him something. He's like I don't know what you're talking about. I was like the cactus coolers. They're diet cokes. He's like. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. It's like somebody, I guess, that the Hoonigan thing did that to him, and it kind of accidentally ended up in our hands. But um, Hurts yeah. the one that just did the song with T Pain, right? Yeah, yeah. dude, fucking that's our RX Seven motor. <laughs> that beat. I am sorry, she's normally not like this. Um, she's chilling. She got the broccoli. Uh, so what's the asparagus? Oh shoot, dude, she wild. We have an outdoor cat that's probably making some noise. Um, Name Taco. <laughs> yeah, right, Taco. It's like outside security. But yeah, I mean, what's your opinions on the Hoonigan thing? I guess I just ranted about that for like 20 no, minutes. No, you're good, bro. No, I think, uh, so do you guys know, like, so do you know the history of Ken Block's, like, up, upcoming? So, like, as, DC, I see, I imagine. So, like, I know, like, like, I feel like all of us are self made here for the most part, right? We had very limited help. And I think Ken Block is basically in that same boat, right? And before Hoonigan, he created DC Shoes and sold it for, I think he sold it for like, like close to eighty million dollars, and he owned half of it. And that so was like what twenty, thirty years ago, or something. About twenty years ago, probably. So like, yeah. What's that in today's market? Yeah. I guess that was money. I don't know. I, yeah, it well, was just a significant amount. And yeah. Anyways, like he. So obviously, Ken Block has business smarts. He's super smart. But one thing that he has as a businessman that a lot of businessmen don't is he has the creative aspect down. Like he knows what people want. He knows how to create. He's very imaginative and he can take a vision and put it into perspective and make it like reality. And I think that's why Ken Block was so successful. So like in 2021, right, when Hoonigan has all this value and reach and marketing, um, I don't know, obviously I wasn't there for the deal, but it made sense for them at the time to give a large piece of ownership to the wheel company because wheels are more like a traditional business, right? They get product wholesale very cheap they sell it for retail price they make a split it's very it's very like non-creative in my opinion unless you're designing the wheels but the, i don't think they're doing that i don't know i don't know the details of it but i, I think, think you're it. I, I think with with ken gone you know like you have this business guy that's also super creative now it's all business right it's all business now and i think one thing that business people that aren't creative tend to overlook is like not just the power of branding, but how to brand correctly. And I think that's where they're going wrong is they're trying to turn Hoonigan into what makes business sense, but it's not always about that. There's a lot to do with branding, creativity, and like what people actually want. So that's my thoughts on it. But I, I totally agree with everything you say. I just, yeah. it's such a change in direction. It sucks. No, it, it definitely sucks. Right. And, and people already naturally are super like resistant to change, right? Like if we are, if we're on Facebook and one day it updates, we're pissed, right? Like I have to rework how to find shoes on marketplace at this, right? So. I think it's worse than, I, I agree with you there. Like change is annoying, right? If, oh, if sure. iPhone doesn't update and it changes the way my text screen goes, I'm kind of annoyed. Stupid first world problems. Yeah. But I think, uh, I watched this YouTuber talk about the Hoonigan thing 
kind of like an interview format. He's like, I guess, friends with the tire company and Hoonigan before the merge, and he's like kind of in a diverse, divorce scenario, so he doesn't want to say bad on either party. But he pointed out, he's like, with Hoonigan, it's almost like you like kind of got into like this secret thing. There's like, you were a part of the cool thing. They kind of like sold you on false hopes. And this is just me reiterating what he was saying, but it was almost like you got all excited about this thing. You were passionate. You were telling your friends, this is cool content. These are cool guys. They're relatable. This was, this was BK, right? Before Ken? Uh, Before Ken's passing? Correct. Yeah. It was like how Hoonigan was BKP. back in the day. So Hoonigan was, let's say, 2020. Like, gotcha. Gotcha. You were excited to have it on your car. You put it on your drift car because you felt like they were about the community. You felt like they represented you and your friends. Sure. Yeah. You, I mean, I'm sure there's yeah. some guys that have a fucking tattooed across. I mean, they were like, this is my people. Yeah. And then to see it sold to some fucking four-wheel parts wannabe company or whatever the case is, it's like, what? Yeah. It's it's money, bro. It's all about money. But that's like, there's like a bait and switch. There's like a yeah, disloyal aspect to that. Man, if you were really a passionate person about it, that just like totally flipped the whole moral code upside down. That's like yeah. what Hoonigan yeah. represents, like what Hoonigan drivers just out there doing whatever they kind of want. Yeah. Similar to like the careless mantra. So it's like if we were to go sell ourselves to like a, a book company or book distributor, like what? Books like, and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're like, yeah, we're now pushing audio books on yeah, like on yoga. Stuff. What? Yeah. That's just totally opposite. I don't know. That's so funny. Not funny, but it's so funny. It doesn't make sense what 100%. I'm saying. I feel like I'm yeah. like stepping no. on a stupid soapbox that no. half the world would be like, what is I he get talking it. about? No, I, I totally understand. I mean, you got you got business, logic versus creativity is what's happening. That's what it is, my, in my opinion. Well, I feel like they so, just bought a really creative thing and now you're just going to watch in the next three to five years that completely just lose all of its blood. Very likely, mind. 100%. Yeah, very likely. But you have uh, Leah, Ken Block's daughter. She's already ripping the tracks, dude. She's got his blood in, in her. So, so I guess she might, she might be the new CEO in 10 years. She's what, 16 or 17, 10 years. She'll be, she'll be my age, 25, 27. It's cool. She's doing she what she's that. doing, but yeah. that's, at, dude, you lost all the guys for a reason. Like you think yeah. all those guys left and there wasn't a huge reason. No, I, no, I agree with you. 100%. So was she going to bring like all of her girlfriends? They'll be like the powder puff of Hoonigan. <laughs> like a bunch of chicks. <laughs> like, they'll all be like in, in no, fluffy mean, cars and be like know. Suki from Too Fast, Too Furious, her and all of her friends. I don't know. <laughs> I just I just think that they lost their ringleader and here's, here's the deal, guys. Careless has so much like equity in marketing, right? The brand. The brand is so valuable because everyone knows about it. Everyone watching this knows about it and dude, they must have like marketing lists for days. Emails, phone numbers, names, that is gold for companies. That is gold. So whenever Wheels Co., whatever their name is, yeah. made a deal to purchase part of Hoonigan, they knew all that. And I'm sure Ken was aware of it too. But now it's like Ken's gone, and now they're like, okay, we want to sell wheels. We have all this information. Let's just sell wheels. But it's like the soul's gone. Right? Yeah. No, I, mean, so, I didn't think yeah. about the data, right? Dude, data is everything. Especially in like urban racing, data is everything. It's going to be everything for sure. Well, and like what you guys said, I feel like it was a company built on being like creative and yeah. out of the box and like just like wow factor. And then now they're trying to just put it back in the box to to conform and, and just fit that model to like yep. just yep. keep pumping out. I agree, man. But it's like when something when something dies out, it's always like I'm I'm always, I'm a fan of like every chapter's end is new beginning, right? And sometimes you can be a different person or a different company. Who knows what the next thing might be? So. It'd be a very positive. I sound like a negative Karen. I just, I was excited about it. Anyway. I think it's the male versions of Kevin, technically. Dang. Yeah. No, is Freaking it, Kevin. Yeah, is yeah, it yeah. Kevin? Yeah. Kevin, yeah. Dang it. Me and Danzy are agreeing, so it's definitely Kevin. It even rhymes with my name. <laughs> <laughs> even, even me and Danzy agree, so <laughs> two against one. And Sophie's on that side of the couch, so it's really three against one. All right. Well, cat's out of the bag. Uh, any big events for you coming up? Dude, this year is packed, bro. It's packed. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to Drift and Drag. I'm really looking forward to that at Texmore Speedway. That's May 4th. May the 4th be with us. Boom. Is that the theme? It's a theme. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's a theme for sure. I don't know if we can brand the whole thing that might be getting a season desist from Star Wars. That would be even bigger. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. You get cool. sued by like yeah. those guys? Be a cool Instagram clout That, post, that but... lawsuit would almost be worth it because I feel like that would put <laughs> you on the map. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. Yeah, no, we don't. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely a way to get on the map, but it's not like once you reach a certain level that like you just you want to do things more correctly. What I don't know it? if we're there yet. Was but. it easy that said all publicity is good publicity? I don't know if I agree with that. Me either. Okay, fair enough. I feel like that yeah. was a celebrity 
like right before cancel culture. He, this was said before cancel culture. True, it's different. Very huh? true. Very true. That's a fair point. Yep. Wow. There's your clickbait yep. title. Right. With the hot take. <laughs> and now you're, you're, uh, dang it. Uh, who's the green guy that the he's Hulk? sipping the tea? The Hulk. No, the the little leaf guy. He's Bruce Banner. No, the green. Kermit the Frog. He's, he's like, oh, he's like, like I almost said Kermit, but I thought that that would sound stupid. So not at all. Like, no, I just think we're trying to make that reference and failing at it. <laughs> what What's up? His color? Wow, dude. Yeah. Hey, this, really is the, this is really is going to be the episode. Yeah, it's like, take this that. is the <laughs> It's because I'm here, boys. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, man. Drifting Drags May Fourth. I'm really excited about that. We have a lot going on. So you're getting sued by Star Wars. Could be, possibly. Just kidding. Could be. <laughs> Just put it out there. Uh, so it's a Saturday night. <clears throat> Your Honor, we refer to them as War is Stars. Therefore, oh. separate entity. Separate That's entity. That's how you do it. Loophole's baby. But, 20%. Yeah. It's going to be 20% different. We also have an event upcoming. Um, you know who they are. You may know. The audience may not know. But we are Mopar. Both of us Mopar are Mopar heaven, Mopar. dude. Yeah. March yeah. 20th. Third, shout out to Pedro. Texas Motor Speedway. Yeah, so it, this is actually a big step for uh, for me and my company because um, we've always had to just rent out Texas Motor Speedway and do our full event. But it's actually kind of nice because We Are Mopar is renting out the track. They're doing their event, and then Urban Racing is coming in as the drift organizer. So I get to drive all day. I'm excited. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I never get to do that. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. Someone's asking you a question, like, I, I genuinely yeah. don't know. Get to drive all day, don't have to worry about the building catching on fire. I just work here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every time, so not a building, but things catch on fire every time. Every time. Yeah. What's the craziest, like, uh, now that seems like a great, like, next point. Craziest fire situation, safety hazard. We we kind of make that ongoing thing like craziest travel story, for yeah, you. yeah crazy yeah. event story. Okay, man. Uh, okay, so the craziest event thing that's happened. Yeah, yeah. beer number two, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. Oh, um, Topo Chico. <laughs> I'd, I'd say the scariest one for me. My my first event, Texmer Speedway. Um, we had a gentleman uh, go past Apex on the course. And for any of y'all that don't know, Texmer Speedway when you're drifting there. It is very, very fast. I mean, we're talking, you're doing 100 miles an hour, eating that e-brake, like eating it and going sideways, like completely unnatural, completely stupid, but it's we still do it, it's fun. But this one guy, he uh, he's a really good driver, but even good drivers make mistakes, right? And he went off track and uh, there's this really dangerous turn that I really learned about after this accident, uh, but he basically barreled into a, uh, a concrete barrier and it had tires in front of it. So there's a fire hydrant, barrier and then rows of tires right and he went into it probably 55 50 miles an hour brother his car was caged has a had a roll cage he was in the seat um the cage completely bent so the cage bent and intruded into the seat he broke like six ribs and i remember this what kind of car was it this was a i think it oh, i remember was, this happening i, I want to say it was like an a86 i want to say oh, that's tough. i want to say um but i'm trying to remember the gentleman's name but I'm not gonna lie, like, so this was in 2020, so I was even younger. I think I was 21. It's pretty traumatic for me, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I made a big mistake. But I'll never forget, dude, they brought the ambulance up. TMS is very professional when this happens. I mean, they literally see people die in NASCAR, so, you know, this is a walk in the, the pancake park for them. But they loaded this dude on the stretcher, and I was like, bro, bro, I was like, I was like, are you okay? And he's like, hell yeah bro that was awesome he's like yeah i'm like dude this wow that's why i love drifting that's you should why record I, that and send dude. it to your lawyer like he said he had fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was smiling when he left here yeah and he is it was kind of scary because right after that happened uh the track supervisor came up to me he's like uh go grab the waiver he signed i was like yes sir so i had to go dig for waivers but um did no. he sign a waiver yeah yeah, yeah everyone signs a waiver yeah everyone signs a waiver but that's probably the craziest thing that's happened. Craziest thing that's happened happened at an event. Uh, I can't speak, but yeah, that's what I got. What about craziest thing on the like traveling to an event? Because I know before, like so, like we just travel all over the country for like all yeah. year round. So what's what's something that's like just really stuck out that happened on the way to someplace? My first and only experience in Vegas. Not I had that written think. down as a talking point. I, not yeah, we can talk about that. We can segue right into it. I guess. Yeah, yeah, right. The, the grin, <laughs> the grin is getting me really excited to hear. Oh, I story. don't even know why I'm grinning. It's terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Okay, so uh, y'all know what SEMA is, right? Yeah. SEMA. So for anyone who doesn't know, SEMA is like the business mecca networking hub of automotive stuff in America. So we had to go to it. We're at cars. It's a Super Bowl for cars. Yeah, yeah, for sure. 
So anyways, so SEMA is at Vegas, I'm pretty sure every year. Um, I've never been to Vegas and I don't drink or smoke anymore or party anymore. So kind of missed out on that part, but I still got screwed over. So it's all good. But we, we went to Vegas, bro. And uh, we rented out this hotel room and it wasn't a bad hotel room, but I remember for me, Gabby and Greg, we got this whole trip for like, bro, it was like $1,200 for like four days, including flights, including lodging, rental car, everything. It was cheap, bro. And we get to the hotel, this is on a Monday night, uh, Monday, Monday evening. And um, I'm just gonna name drop it, it was called The Rio. It was bro, so bad. But we get there and the hotel actually is pretty nice. It was really, it was nice. It was like a little bit older, but it was refurbished. And we got in there, the room's really nice and everything. Uh, it's like a, it's like a suite, bro. There's a couch, there's two beds in there, right? And um, I had a, a meeting for my real estate company and my business partner is crazy. He gets up at like two in the morning because he has kids and he's worth like 40 million bucks. So he wakes up super early. But I had a meeting with him at 2.30 a.m. And then I had to go to see him at like 8 a.m. So this is Monday leading into Tuesday. So I look at Greg and I was like, dude, I'm not gonna go to bed because I'm about to wake up at 2 a.m. Screw that. Like, I'm just gonna stay up for my meeting and then go to bed and then wake up and go to SEMA, right? I feel like that's better for the sleep cycle, right? So anyways, me and Greg stay up basically all night. And Greg Greg works with me as a partner in Urban Racing, um, Urban Drift School. And we're, we're in this hotel and it's very like, it's weird, bro. So it's like a hotel casino, right? Y'all been to Vegas, you know that vibe, right? And it was very, granted it was on a Monday, right? Not a Saturday, but it was very slow. It was like a ghost town. Um, I actually won like a hundred bucks. That was cool. I was on slots, made, t turned 20 bucks into a hundred dollars. But we're like, me and Greg are so boring. So this, this is like eight o'clock at night. I gotta stay up until two in the morning. So like we're walking, we're wandering everywhere. Um, so time passes by, time passes by, eventually, Greg's like, yo, bro, I'm gonna go to bed. It's two in the morning. So I'm like, okay, bro, cool. So Greg walks upstairs, goes to bed. And then um, I do my meeting at 2.30 and then get back to my room at 3 a.m. So this is where the story gets good. So this is where the story gets good. So I walk into my hotel room. Uh, my girlfriend Gabby's on one bed. Greg's on the other bed. They're both passed out. I walk in there. I've been up for, I don't know, 20 hours at this point. I'm exhausted. And I crawl into bed and go to sleep. And one thing I noticed was like, Gabby always falls asleep to like a TV show on her phone. She has that thing, I don't know, I don't know what it's called, but she has to fall asleep to noise and her phone wasn't there, but I was so tired. I was like, she probably put her phone in her pocket, whatever, right? So I get into bed and I start falling asleep and um, about 10 minutes, 15 minutes into me falling asleep, I hear a door creak open. I'm getting goosebumps just saying this, but I hear a door creak open. So I kind of wake up, I'm still laying down. I'm kind of wake up and I'm like, I'm processing that. And I'm like, you know, it's probably the neighbor, the neighbor's door, right? I hear creak, it's probably the neighbor's door. And I stopped hearing it. So I was like, yeah, the, the neighbors came home. They're trying to be nice, whatever. Cool, right? This is like three in the morning at this point, 3.10. I close my eyes, lay, I'm still laying down, close my eyes, 30 seconds pass. And like the paranoid part of my brain, I'm sure y'all have this too, was like, bro, that was sketchy. Like sit up, right? So I'm like, all right, all right, I'm gonna sit up. So I sit up and luckily I left the light on in the bathroom. So there was like a night light. The room was completely dark. There was this gentleman, I like sit up. There was this gentleman standing in the middle of our living room, wearing a bandana, standing like this, staring at me. And you guys know like when you're half asleep and you're in that like paralysis mode where your body's like relaxed and you're falling asleep and you're super tired. Well, I was sitting up and, I, and me and this dude just make eye contact. And like the only thing I could do or say was like, it was like Jordan Bell for me, super messed up. He was like, what the fuck? So that's all I could say. I was like, what the fuck? I started yelling at him. Well, this dude, realizing I'm awake, turns and darts out the door. The door slams shut. And I'm like, what just happened, bro? Like, what just happened? I, and at first, like, I didn't know if he was there to hurt me, hurt them, steal something. I don't know. So I get up and I'm like, what the hell? So I wake up Greg. We go out to the hallway in our underwear. We're like posed up. Don't know what's going to happen. No one's around. There's nobody there. And we're on the 18th floor, by the way. So... It was really strange. We're all freaking out. So I walk down to the lobby and I go talk to the front desk. That's like what you logically would do, right? Someone just broke into your hotel room, right? That's what you would do. So I go and I'm actually really good under pressure and I can communicate very well. So I went and said, hey, I need to talk to your manager. Right? I, got, I, got, I got some shit to tell you, right? I need to talk to someone that has management experience in this establishment. So the manager comes up to me or one of them. And I start talking to him and I, and I basically very calmly tell him what happened. And the whole time he's like, uh-huh, okay, all right. And I said, yeah. So I, my room just got broken into. He's like, 
okay, do you want me to put you in a different room? And I'm like, what? Do you want me to put you in another? No, I want you to say, oh my God, I can't believe that happened. Like, are you guys okay? Like he, had, he didn't show any empathy, right? At all. I'm like, this is weird, bro. But I, I talk with him a little bit more. He takes down the notes and I'm like, dude, I just, we're gonna leave in the morning. I want a refund. He's like, okay, like, let me take your notes down. So I walk back upstairs. And at this point, Gabby and Greg were still in the room. Their stuff's missing. So her phone's gone. His phone's gone. Wallets are gone. Purse is gone. Mac Gabby's MacBook is gone. Um, thousand dollars in cash. I don't know why Greg would carry that on him, but that was gone. And so like we, we got <laughs> mugged. We got mugged. Like, I don't know if mugs not the word. We got robbed, right? And uh, thank God, bro, I had my phone in my wallet. I was the only person that had ID, a debit card, or a phone. That was it. So I walk back down there. And I'm like, yeah, our stuff was stolen. And I still get the same like PR, like, corp. I'm gonna talk about corporate. I get like the same corporate PR response. I'm so like, oh, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. Let's move you to a different branch, right? So at this point, a couple different things happen. I'm gonna try and keep the story short. But what I realized was there's no way this dude, when he came in, stole all of our stuff. He came in twice, right? He came in between the time Greg went to bed and I was on my meeting and then went to bed. So this dude somehow got into our room twice, right? And I'm like, how do you break into a room twice, right? He's gotta have a card or something, something, right? Um, so anyways, it's like, at this point, it's 4.30 a.m. Um, I call one of my business partners in the real estate company and I just I just lay it out there. I'm like, cause like, I can trust this guy, he's really smart. So I told him everything that happened and he told me, bro, I guarantee you the hotel room is on it, is in on it. Like they probably gave him a pass. They probably communicated with them because they put us on the 18th floor. Like we're on the 18th floor all the way on the end of a branch. And I'm like, sometimes I'm naive, but I'm not stupid. There's no one following me when I went to bed and there's no cameras up there. So it's like someone had to communicate A, where our room was, but B, also give them a, a key code. So, so, you know, at this point it's a suspicion, whatever. I can't, I can't like, I, I'm suspicious at this point, but I can't really say anything like, Hey, you guys broke into our room, right? Well, this is where it gets crazy. So about 5 a.m. hits, and anyone that has an iPhone knows the Find My app on their phone. Well, Gabby's phone was stolen. About 5 in the morning, I'm checking my iPhone, and ping, ping, her Find My pops up, brother. Like, they turned her phone on. It showed it was behind the front desk. Mm. I was like, dude, no way, bro. No way. So at this point, 5 a.m., the phone shows us behind the front desk. I was already pretty sure it was an inside job. Now I'm like 100% sure. So I, I, at this point, I'm talking to the manager's manager, the supervisor, the security supervisor, and the security supervisor was the sketchiest guy. It's like this dude that was probably in his mid thirties and he would always, any question I would ask him, he'd answer in a really weird way. So at this point, I walked up, I walk up to him and I don't want to tell him I have a location of the phone because if I tell him that, I knew they're probably going to go and turn the phone off and cr crush it or something, right? But I went up to him and I was like, hey, bro, can I talk to you? Can I pull you aside for a second? He's like, yeah, bro, for sure. And I said, hey, man, I look him in the eyes. I'm like, I need my shit back. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I have a strong feeling one of your guys took my stuff. I don't want to call cops. I don't want to get a police report involved. I just want my shit back. And he's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about, bro. So at this point, I'm losing my patience. So I pull out my iPhone and I show him like, dude, here's find my iPhone. Here's your front desk. Here's the location of her iPhone, right? It shows us right there. And this dude gave me the stupidest, stupidest back and forth. He looks at it, he's like, where's the front desk at? I'm like, bro, you're the security supervisor. What do you, it's right there, bro. He's like, uh, no, no, like what if it's not accurate? And I'm like, dude, come on. So they would refuse to let me look. They wouldn't even look for it. I had to like persuade them after 45 minutes to go look for it. They wouldn't let me look at the security cam footage. The whole thing was a shit show, dude. So we were there till 8 a.m. The cops came. They wouldn't let the cops look for it at all. That's interesting. Yeah, they wouldn't let the cops look for it. So they filed a police report. Um, dude, thank God I had my wallet and my phone because we had a rental car. They took the keys to it. Thank God the car was still there. They would have stolen the car too, probably. But um, we had to get an Uber back to the rental car company to get a new key. What was funny guys is the rental car company was the one star place. We were in like a four star hotel. The one star place <laughs> had so much 
empathy for our situation. They were so kind. There were some sketchy people working there, but they were so kind. That was the guy that had the keys. He's like, yeah, we found a backup. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sorry, I'm not trying to fuck with you. Right? No, no, no. It makes you no, wonder, though, when these no. things happen. Yeah. Like, well, it's like those airports you know? that have been having issues where they're like the, the people that are leaving their vehicles there while people go out of town. Like, if they pull up in a nice T-Rex, they're like, oh, yeah, park in this area, like, in this spot. We'll keep an eye on it, and then they come back, and their truck's gone. That's so bizarre you say that. You know that happened to Travis's friend? I was thinking that exactly. That, 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 that exact vehicle and everything. At the airport? Brother. Wow. He was like, brother. Dude. I think he was, he flew to Vegas, and uh, he Dude. while he so drove to the DFW airport. Shout, I'm sorry, Chad. Shout out to Bombay Vapor. Good company. Uh, right over there by Speedway for all your vapor needs. Um Parked his nice, beautiful truck, brand new, beautiful truck at the airport, flew to Vegas. While he was in Vegas, I'm pretty sure he got a, a notification toll tag in Houston. Wow. Nah, no, no way. I'm in, I'm in Vegas. My car wow. At the airport. Came back, and it. then I think they spent a good bit of time looking for his truck. And finally that's came gone. to it. Dude, that's nuts. Dude, so yeah, Chaz is a good guy at Bombay wow. Vegas. So that, that sucks. <laughs> but I think Kenny's situation was definitely... Well... It worked out better because Kenny got his car back. But that's well, because there's a trailer attached to a race car that he was like losing the brand new oh, Dewey yeah, yeah. with the trailer yeah. and yeah, the car. More high dollar for it's sure. Yeah, yeah. Nice, bro. We did not get our stuff back, bro. Like once I saw the location of the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, I, I will mention this just because I'm risky. I'm not supposed to say this. I may or may not have jumped over the counter. <laughs> allegedly allegedly speaking yeah. i'm not going to confirm nor deny those details but yeah we didn't say where this counter was at yeah it's on a movie set in mexico Boom. yeah but uh even if i did i theoretically never found the stuff so but yeah so that's my travel story dude that's the worst one that was that was terrible bro and, and it, it got to a point too i think this is what's hard for me i'm a very honest person and i also stand my ground though like if you if you fuck with me like i'm gonna fuck with you like fairly you know what i mean like don't don't mess with me well, that's the point I got to. But I was like up for a day straight at this point. So like I started questioning my judgment. I was like, did they actually steal our stuff? Like even even like is the GPS inaccurate on this on her phone? And one thing that was impressive is every single employee I talked to was so consistent with the BS. They were no way. like every one of them, dude, they just they gave the most like corporate PR response. You know what that tells me? It's probably not irregular that they do this. No, no. And it would only take, because I worked at hotels for well uh, over a decade. Uh, it only takes a master key. So it's not even yeah. like they'd have to have individual keys. And like, they don't, yeah. I mean, at least I worked at a nice hill and they didn't reprogram the master key to like every three to six months. Yeah. So one master key was good for three months until they swiped them and then everybody got reissued a new one. They they gave us sorry they gave us a countless list a, a countless list of what 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 could have happened right what could have happened happens like the you know what I'm trying to say or something yeah or like they gave it they gave us different excuses as to what could have happened brother you know what they told what they told Gabby what's that well ma'am there's a lot of construction going on in the west wing of the building it could have just been a construction worker I'm like bro it's three in the morning. With a bandana on, brother. Who a construction worker goes in there wearing a so bandana? What, uh, put the lights off. No. And what would have <laughs> justified the missing items? Or seeing it as yeah. a construction worker that stole it? Yeah, were they doing some R and D on like yeah. Apple's iMac team? Dude, get out of here, bro. They think we're stupid. Here's we're the thing. For a cop out. So if you go on the reviews of this hotel, look it up. It's the Rio Rio Hotel in Las Vegas. So my I, my mom actually my mom's a detective. Not really, but like she thinks she's a detective. She's really good at it. But she she went online, dude. She that was funny. Up. Like, mom was like, she's not, but she's really good. But she's a detective. I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. I feel like every so, woman's a Facebook detective. Oh, good my mother. Yeah, yeah she's good. Bro. She's good. It gets better when she's they turn good. into moms. Yeah. <laughs> she went online, dude, and there was a review from three weeks prior to our visit where the same time, bro, someone this lady said that someone tried to come in the room at three a.m. and the hotel said it was they double booked the room. No. No, they, they do this. So interesting enough, I actually went, uh, as we were Ubering around, um, if you think about it, Uber drivers are locals typically, right? So, bro, the, the, the silver line of the story is we went everywhere and got such good treatment from everybody that we would tell the story to, because they're like, that is terrible. Like, yeah, it's terrible. They're like, here's your free pancake. I'm like, thank you, bro. Well, the Uber drivers would, would, would give us some insight, and apparently this hotel um, used to be in its prime in like 1970s to the 90s. Well, it just got bought out by new ownership, and apparently new ownership is, like, not taking care of it. So I have a feeling the employees that work there are probably struggling, and they have, like, a whole ring of 
burglaries where they go and I mean, you gotta think about it. 3 a.m. in Vegas, you're drunk, you're high, you're messed up, right? Someone comes in the door, you think it's housekeeping, and then you wake up and all your stuff's gone. You go down to the hotel, you go down to the manager, and you're like, dude, you were drinking, bro. I don't know what happened. We weren't drinking, we were sober. So, but like, we're not most people. Well, that's also, you gotta be struggling to be that, that ballsy with it because like, everywhere I travel, I may or may not take my handgun with me and it's gonna yeah. be in the hotel room. So to, For sure. to have that, to be able to like go into somebody's room and, yeah. and not have that fear in the back of your head that you could get shot or something. I think we also, respectfully, I think we're so Texan, we think Texan. Fair but I think out there, like I know you're talking about Nevada, so I don't know their gun laws, but like we are just so fucking Texan. Like yeah. when I'm at, we went to Kincaid's, I think yeah. Kincaid's in my mind. Like when I'm out there and me and you are eating burgers, I'm like, I know 25% of these guys have guns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think Fair that's enough. just like Fair a enough. Texas thing. I don't know how it is out there. But I imagine most of those yeah. people could be international travelers, or they flew at least. They're coming off the airport. Yeah, most so it's a little bit harder to travel true, with your firearm. Because yeah. yeah. that's like a true tourist trap, or they're with their family. or So like when we're traveling, we're guys, we got our, our nice equipment, we're, you know, road, trailer, that I mean, life. That makes way more sense. Everywhere I travel, I take my bike, so I have to drive anyway, yeah. so I'm not having to deal with their. And obviously, the careless always have the trailer or the big yeah. truck, so yeah. it's like, we really pack down, and we got camera equipment stuff, but that's, and like, that's another weird one where when we're traveling, it's like your bike and my drone, blah, blah, blah. That's harder to flip and sell. But look at that situation. People are going there with motherfucking cash, cold, mm -hmm. hard cash. As soon yeah. as it leaves his hand, yeah. that's not trackable. Unless he like took individual pictures of each bill. So you're like, yeah. what are you gonna know the serial numbers Put on it? racing stamp on every dollar bill <laughs> Then that's a felony too. I'll, I'll say this, so the like- facing government property. I you're just a temporary holder of it. I would say this story to a lot of guys, and they all say the same thing. Like, oh, I would have beat his ass. I would have shot that guy. Here's the truth of it, bro. Look, I, I have a 9 mil I travel with. Like, I'm not the biggest gun enthusiast, but I, I like I do I do Uber sometimes, right? And I'm going to have a gun on me, right? Yeah. I don't trust people. But here's the thing, bro. I Even if I had my gun, I probably would not have shot him for two reasons. Number one, I'm laying in bed in my underwear, bro. I'm not going to have it, like, in my butt, you know? Like, I'm going to have to wake up, like, reach for the gun, cock it, right, point it at him, it's not enough time. Now, if you were to try and attack me, that's different. That's two different things. But just being in my hotel room, the other thing too, dude, is like, I think this gets overworked, and overlooked in gun culture, but if you shoot and injure or kill somebody, that's a big deal. Like, yeah. you better have a damn good reason for doing that, because if you don't, the likelihood of you going to prison is up there. Counterpoint, is that when you go into prison, it's also you get countersued. Countersued, yeah, by, yeah, the, by yeah. the family. If so it's like, him, even, right? yeah, even if the yeah. state of Texas is like, well, it's justified, but then the family back, you killed my brother. Sure, he yeah. was a good guy. He just had 15 felonies, but he was going to church. <laughs> he was going to turn over a new leaf. His well, 13 like kids most of saw them, him on his birthday. Most of them now, if like you shoot him in the back, then you go like, like straight to jail. Really? So there was, like, there was like a comedy yeah. skit. I can't remember who did it, but they were like, the burglar, as soon as the guy pulled a gun on him, he just turned his back and like started walking backwards at the guy and like yeah, still taking everything and then just walking out. But I don't know. yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of uh, um, like the like shooting someone has to be the like last yeah last, last straw. straw. They're trying to kill you. You're yep. fearful for your life. What about that castle doctrine? Isn't that a thing in like Florida or Alabama where like they have some wicked rules that like. The castle law, like that's you right. can do some well, rowdy. That's, that's how it shit. is here in Texas, and the and they actually extend that to your vehicle, and that's why whenever, whenever we're out on stunt rides or we're out cruising around, like if you punch somebody's mirror, you're attacking the person their in their home, so mm, they can defend themselves. That's why all those mirror punchers. It's a very bad idea. Interesting. Um, if they can catch you. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I've seen some pretty. There's like some pretty. There's a freaking funny video that it happened i want to say in austin and there was a gentleman on a grom and this lady was doing she was just like minor business and i guess she may have cut off the group so he punches the mirror and so she's like oh you punched my mirror and just turns the wheel like that and knocks him over off of his bike and then he wants to play the play the victim even though he kind of instigated the situation. He caught he caught a lot of hate on. Well, she did a mirror. How she can she see how close yeah. she is. I'm writing her a lawyer. That seems like a fair point. Yeah, that was a pretty funny interaction that went viral. And Oof, I kind of want to see this. Days. I'm not gonna lie, brother. Like I have nothing wrong with bikers, right? At all. But you I told me know. before we were on camera, you thought they're all gay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, yeah I am too. So, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. 
uh, bring them down with me, right? But I will, dude, I, I stay away from most motorcyclists because, like, dude, they're look uh, not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them are just looking for problems. Oh, 100%. You'd all agree yeah. with me on that one. And then there's those, like... Yeah, 100%. So you have, like, the what we deal with a lot with the stunt riding is that um, people that put on a vest and bought their first Harley and they've only had the bike for a minute, they think they're sure. the baddest thing on the road that's and that, that's uh, everything. But then we have interactions with actual one percenters um like the hell's angels and stuff like that and they yeah. love what we do but like you have those dudes that buy the bike and they adopt that personality and they think yeah. that they own the roadway and that yeah i it, i respectfully don't think it's a lot of them i think those are the ones so if you had a pack of they 50 stick out the most yes they're the yes. ones looking so they're like the little boners in the back where you can have 48 cool fucking good sure. guys whether sure. they're real mcs or dudes like you badass athletes genuinely you're a fucking gangster athlete so you can have like a hardcore Hells Angels are a badass athlete, and it's the two out of fucking 50 that see a car do yeah. something, and they're like, this is my moment! Because, yeah. like, this is, like, yeah. their, their, little, their little rent rocket gets up, they're like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, oh hold on, step back, Nancy, this is, I've been watching enough YouTube to know I'm going to go just viral. Like with the, with the Sorry, I got her excited. The, she, was, like, she was calm for a second. Because the people look at the drift scene poorly. Because of the street takeovers, that's right, 100%. and it's that one bad apple. But yep. that's the video that goes viral, and that's what everyone thinks of the entire drift scene now. It's very similar with the uh, yeah. Sophie has a couple of opinions on the on she the gets topic. Excited about it, but that's that's one thing that both of our scenes are struggling with. There's a few bad apples that have gone viral, and it's just bringing down both scenes. And Good there's segue. people that are that are striking. Yeah. I feel like everyone in this on this couch right now is striving to move, elevate their sport to the next level and actually make people view it as a sport so as true. opposed to a hooligan event that is all about just messing with the police and running from the cops and, and just antagonizing people. 100%. I, I think that's literally like why my business exists, really. I don't think I did it on purpose, but we've kind of adopted it by necessity just to like not be a part of that group like we yeah. don't promote that yeah another reason like to go back to we are mopar it's like reasons and your events obviously and what you provided for your event in december mm -hmm. last year like it's an opportunity to kind of keep it more organized organized and um just give people a chance to do it in a legit manner so they don't have to continue to kind of do it in this like Absolutely. rambunctious risky way or hurting people rambunctious uh yep. risky of the industry it makes it even harder for guys like us to get sponsors, right? Because okay. helmets don't want to be attached to that. And, and tire companies don't want to be attached to these yeah. types of things or wheel companies. Or cases. Yeah, man. Absolutely. It's a wild west out there. It's a wild, wild west. Do, have you run into, with you hosting so many events, have you run into a lot of issues with people not respecting spots? Because that's one thing that we've had an issue. That's why we keep losing parking lots. Like the businesses will be okay with us for being out there for months, but then people start leaving trash. Meacham was and, things for years. Oh bro. yeah, losing Meacham was People start leaving sad. trash and burnt. Like they're doing tire changes at the lot and leaving tires out there, and it's just ridiculous. Just pouring parts. oil. Mm -hmm. So are, dirty oil. So like, so is the question more so dealing with losing venues or dealing with people that don't respect the place? Both losing Both. venues because people don't respect places. Yeah, so I've been early in my career. Like I got into doing events in 2018 at Mineral Wells Airport. Um, I had problems there for sure because I wasn't established. And I was a kid. So I'm a kid, but like I was like 18, 19 years old. Yeah, I would have people that would come up there and not pay to get in, fly through the gate. Uh, it sucks, man. Um, but as I like evolved in how I run the events, one thing I learned. One thing I learned about doing events is. Um, everything comes down to the environment, right? So like, how many staff do you have? Do you have staff? How many staff do you have, right? How old are they? What kind of behavior are they showing, right? Um, what's the professionalism of the event like, right? Because um, even if you have some bad apples there, their environment is going to dictate the extent of their behavior. That's what I've learned. So if you set a very controlled environment and you kind of write the rules, like not literally, but you literally like, I'm saying literally too much. You don't write the rules, the rules literally, but you behave in them and show people like, hey, this is what's acceptable, this is what's not. People typically abide by that, typically. But yeah, I've definitely lost venues due to people being stupid, for sure. Not anymore though, <laughs> not anymore. But for you guys, like you're going out to places where you probably don't, probably don't have a permit, probably don't have exact written permission. I'm not judging, right? That's a little bit different, I feel like. 
um, not that like it's it's worse. It's just it's just a different situation. So yeah, it sucks because like a few of the guys will will like we'll take initiative initiative and we'll go talk to the businesses. We'll be like, hey, Love it. are Love you guys it. okay with us being out here uh, doing this? And they're like, oh yeah, it's cool, like free show. We're getting to watch. Just don't don't tear things up. And if you get yep. hurt, don't sue us. Yep. <laughs> like there was multiple times where simple. I know I can I know three times where we've had an ambulance called out to that lot and no one sued. We had zero issues. Got everyone taken care of. No one died, and they let us stay out there. That's good. But that's really good. Then people literally like we we hosted an event where there was hundreds of people out there, and there was a 50, 60 bikes at a time out there riding and had no issues. But then everyone leaves trash, and then everyone is going mm-hmm. out there like. Every day during the week, and one of the funniest things to me was, like, we had an understanding where if semi trucks came in and needed to get to a bay, we stop riding and let them go. Yeah. But then you have the kids out there that think that we deserve to be out there more than the semi trucks, and so they won't stop doing wheelies, and yeah. they'll cut off the semi trucks that are just there doing their job, and then it just is, it's just putting a bind on everybody. Uh, that, that's a true struggle, man. I need to come out to one of these, by the way. You should. It's a good experience, but I think it kind of relates to both. It's like, it's normally the guy that's not from around there that does it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's like, well, I drove two hours to be here. Fuck that 18 other guy. It's like, well, that 18 other guy is allowing us to be here. So, yeah, no, fuck you. Yeah. And I think that's sometimes with the events. Those are like, and just yeah. more so maybe not to your events because they're organized and they pay admissions, but yeah. to like yeah. just car shows, car meets in general, where it's normally like kind of a free come and go thing. That's the guy that leaves and like floors it and like runs into a group of people because he's like, yeah, I'm Mustang. never coming back here. Yeah, well, he's got a few. <laughs> so we'll say like, a, yeah, I have a, I have a Mustang problem. Two of them. You know, it's interesting. So we we're doing the careless is in on it too. This is your meet as well. We do a, a monthly meet now. It's not a motorcycle thing specifically, but it's like car enthusiasts in general. Um, we do it at a awesome dealership for classic cars at the airport, and it's free. Right, and it definitely made me worried because, as you pointed out, Evan, like having to pay to come to an event, it sets that environment. I'm paying to come to an event. I want to get my money's worth, right, in a good way, typically. With a free event, you got to worry about that. And man, it's just it, I can't I can't stress enough just the environment. And there's another piece to it as well besides the environment. And it's like if you're in school and your teacher is trying to get you to do something, you are more likely to listen to your peers right? Your, 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 your friends. If your teacher's trying to tell you something, yeah, whatever, mom, whatever, you know what I mean? But if it's your, your best friend, your other best friend, they're like, no, nah, man, you should do it like this. People are way more likely to listen to their peers. So in an event situation, if you have a healthy environment, right, that, that really is against the mischievous behavior, and then typically most of the people attending it accept that, right, and portray it, that peer pressure is almost like positive peer pressure. It's stronger than just the environmental pressure, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I mean, as an organizer, I really have to do anything for when it comes to like people breaking rules because people want to break rules when it's socially acceptable acceptable and like encouraged. That I mean, we're getting deep in psychology kind of. But, yeah. No, I mean, it all makes sense. So, you yeah, know, we've definitely been trying to push for that. There's a, a bunch of there's a bunch of big names in the stunt writing scene that are trying to make positive changes and they're try, they're like yeah. preaching that we have to, I hate to use this term, but like police, like our, our buddies, like you want to, you want to call out your buddies on your BS, on their BS if they're doing something that's going to get the entire scene looked at poorly. Yeah. Like you need to, yeah. you need to be able to like call each other out and, and so that we can continue to do what we love to do. That was what Brian was saying, right? Yeah, with that incident that happened in Philadelphia. I really like the way he I'm said right, that. Yeah. Real quick. quick intermission. Apparently, let us know, dude, what it looked like. Yeah, and you were the one making comments on yeah. Track and Evan's drinks. You ever seen albino uh, broccoli? It was like that. that flavor. <laughs> albino broccoli. <laughs> yeah. Albino is white, right? I think so. <laughs> Got uh, actually, albino is lack of pigment. Hmm? <laughs> really? So white people. <laughs> yeah. There's still some sort of pigment there. Um, dang, I had talking points. All right, so you kicked butt on YouTube. You're kicking butt, hosting events. We are Mopar coming up. Then you said May fourth, your next event. Um, anything crazy with the, you? You're really fucking. You're investing into the crazy cart market, dude. I think you're taking over. Like stock has yeah. gone up in Razor Scooter uh, the last last few weeks. What's going on with that? Yeah. So uh, 
I th you know what a crazy card is, right? Yep. So for the audience that may not know what a crazy card is, it's a little like go kart. It has three wheels on it. Mm -hmm. It has a, a tire in the front that's attached to an electric motor with a steering wheel. And then you sit on it. And in the rear, you have like grocery cart wheels and it has a drift bar. So essentially you pull the bar up, it changes the angle of the grocery cart wheels and you go sideways. So um, there's this really cool place in Missouri called Little Talladega. You guys know what it is? So oh, yeah. cool. Gosh. Never heard of it. Okay. Really? Dude. Never. Oh, oh, I thought that was okay. dude. Let's finish this. And we'll okay. Touch on yeah. That. All right. Yeah. We're gonna be here till one a.m. That's okay though. Um, drift. So it's called Little Talladega slash Drift Mansion. It's a uh, like it's a mansion in Missouri. It's an Airbnb, and it has a drift track for a driveway. It's freaking sick. And then on the property, they also have a warehouse. In the warehouse, they have crazy carts, razors, dirt bikes, ATVs. Arcade well, games. Arcade games, yeah, for the, yep, 100%. I always overlooked that. The crazy carts, though, that was the first place I've ever tried one. And I was, I fell in love. Because it's like, it's like the feeling, it's the same feeling of drifting. You just do it in a different way. You're on a go-kart, right? Versus the actual car. So... Um, I don't know what prompted this in like my brain, but about a month ago, I was like, dude, I think it was two months ago. I was like, we really should build out a fleet. Cause if you think about it at our events, we have, it's a drift event. So we have at the very top level of the freedom course, which is pro level drifters, basically guys that know how to swing at a hundred miles an hour and not die typically. And then you have the training course people, which those are students that have their own cars that want to learn how to drift. So we have those two. And then the next level is going to be our um, students that want to rent a car. So we actually have two Mustangs that we rent out for per hour. It comes with an instructor and that's kind of more expensive, but it's there. The next, the next step is for people who don't really want to learn, but they want to experience it. And that's ride along. So people can come right along in a car. And then anything below that, we don't really have anything below that. So ride alongs are also like 50 bucks or hundred bucks. So there's, there's a price to entry. Well, the crazy car, adds another layer to it. So the crazy cart allows you to kind of learn how to drift, enjoy it by actually driving the cart. And it's kind of, what's well, kind of, it's way cheaper. It's $20 for a ride versus ride alongs are 50 or a hundred. And then if you're renting a car, it's 375, 375 bucks. You see the simulator, you're building that. That's like, that's next. In between. Yeah. So okay. then you have the drifting sim as well, which is like a video game and you can do that as well, which is more well realistic. But anyway, so that that's the why behind it. So, I've been on this mission the last couple of weeks of absolutely claiming every crazy cart that pops up on Facebook marketplace. And brother, I'm like driving the, the cost of them up. Like I went from paying a hundred dollars per cart to like, I had to pay 300 bucks for one the other day. I got a good deal today, but the, the prices are going up. So but yeah, crazy carts, man. They're, you've, got, you've been on one, right? I have not. No, oh, I've always dude. been afraid I'm too big for them. change it. We can, I can bring in the living room real quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we should have put it on the table as the centerpiece. Yeah, there you go. Hey, yeah. Bring his drift cart. I'm going to yeah. like post one and then in the description, I'll be like, got you, Gabe. <laughs> Selling a crazy cart for $25. Come pick it up for my grandma's house. 30. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I've been going deep into it, man. So like, I'm a very like operational minded person. So I'm like, you know, like what's the best tire to run? These things go through tires, just like drift cars. So that has the front tire, like I mentioned in the rear wheels. So like, you, there's all these different variables in the cart, like different kinds of parts you can run, just like a motorcycle, right? So it's like, everyone wants to go fast with them. And I'm like, no, 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 I wanna make them reliable. I wanna make them to where they can be beat on eight hours straight by kids and still run. So having all these parts in stock, learning how to work on them. I went and picked up like this computer charging cart that has all these drill batteries. We've converted them to drill batteries. So kind of the envision is we pull up to any event and I have a crazy cart mechanic and a salesperson and people are able to pay $20 and ride a $300 cart, $500 cart and have the time of their lives and learn how to drift. That's kind of the vision. Yeah, like selling so, them on a pyramid scheme. Like, well, you can't afford the car, just, or the car. Just, <laughs> well, and that little track that you set up at that yeah. event too was not like you had the obstacles and stuff to be able mm -hmm. to like drift around. It's not like you're just in an empty space just no, doing donuts. No. You're actually trying to like yeah. go on a little miniature track. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I, just, I have so much fun. Like, so before I was in the cars, I was in the scooters. Before I could even drive, I had like these little gas powered scooters that I would build out, I had no brakes on, I would do like 40 miles an hour. <laughs> I had so much fun. So like that segued myself into cars once I could drive. So I've always had a love for like scooters and I had a go-kart before I had a car. Like before I was 16, I had a go-kart. We'd get into so much trouble on it. 
so much fun. So. I had such a lame ass like battery powered scooter that I thought was so cool. I like <laughs> got from a neighbor for like twenty dollars or something. Like ten miles an hour probably. Oh, probably like yeah. eight. Like, yeah. but the battery was like dying, so it like was yeah. so much worse. My parents were like, you cannot have anything gas. Really? Wow. Your parents were stricter than mine were. Oh, because well, they just, well it was like, they were strict for right reasons. I was stupid. Mm. So, yeah, right. there had been a medical bill or, Zing. or yeah. 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 Yeah, I was self deserved. Yeah, I, I can't even hate on do anything. Yeah. I didn't give much to, I've never ridden a dirt bike on dirt, and I didn't get given the first. Currently, I still have yet to ride a dirt bike on dirt. I owned one and only rode it in the parking lot. And then I didn't get my first bike until I was 18. I had to be able to sign it off my mom. My dad always gives her a hard time, says that she kept me in a bubble my whole life, but she so never wanted me to out. do what? Now you're acting out. Yeah, that's, well, that's, the, that's the reason why. It's actually all your leg. fault, mom. Right. It is. <laughs> yeah, I, I own that bike. I bought it in, um, I only had it for like seven months and I got hit by a semi truck on that bike yeah, bro. and my mom co-signed on it. So she hated, Thanks, she hated that so much, but. I feel like the more sheltered a kid is, like the more rambunctious they get as adults, you know? Yeah. Because they're like, let me, let me go, let me go, right? Well, and I feel like whenever accidents like that happen to people, sometimes it sets them back, but then other times it propels them forward. Because in like my instance, I was doing everything right. I was wearing all the right gear. I was going under the speed limit and I got hit. So the way that I looked at it, I was like, dang, if I can get hurt doing everything right, I might as well just have fun on these things now. And then just went the complete opposite direction. <laughs> Well, we gotta get you on the dirt, brother. Oh, dude, yeah, I yeah, want yeah. to. Yeah. We were just talking about it before, dude. I want to get a uh, 250 uh, motocross. It's just so bad. Nice. So, crazy cart and take a dirt bike on the dirt. Yep, we need to knock both Seven day out. goal. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But yeah, bro. I'm still surprised you've, like, I've done all the basic shit and you're, like, doing 500 foot stoppies. 400, 400. That's, 400. that's. I hit, I hit 400 this last week. I already texted me 500. So. I'm just I know, I know, I know. I was just <laughs> got a screenshot. To... <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. Pick for proof, dude. It's like yeah, your yeah. height on your on your pro, Tinder profile. You always got to add a couple inches, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like over. A couple. Over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm 6'5", and I look ripped as fuck, man. <laughs> Sorry, so that was aggressive. Yeah, it's like, oh. Dang. So, uh, any big uh, viral moments coming up? You, you've you always done good, like, kind of doing funny videos. I think uh, my favorite one, and gosh, we can maybe insert it right here, was, like, your takeover one in your backyard with the <laughs> lawnmower. Yeah, that one was pretty cool. We took a lawnmower and, like, we basically reenacted a street takeover with a lawnmower. A riding lawnmower. Riding oh, so lawnmower. So people were losing ankles in your backyard? Yeah, or? like, there's yeah. flamethrowers, a bunch of white boys. Oh. Yeah. Fireworks. Yeah. Fireworks. A green <laughs> laser pointed at a helicopter. Like, yeah. Okay, two things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 16% APR, no insurance. Yeah. No yeah. <laughs> throwing, a, throwing a roadblock <laughs> sign through a police car's yeah, windshield. Exactly. You must have um, a big backyard. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I have a half acre in the city, man. My house is like older than my dad, but uh, it's good property. So. I have a half acre in the city. Put that on the tender profile. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's only like a country yeah. song. A half acre in the driveway and a half acre yeah. in the city. It's more like a four of Georgia Lions song. You know? I was going to say, it's going to be a uh, four of Georgia Lions. Keith, I mean, yeah, R.I.P. Dude, yeah. R.I.P. Did he die, bro? Yeah, he yes, died. Yes, dude. Yeah, How? Died. Stomach cancer, man. It's crazy. Toby probably Keith. drinking too much. Yeah, probably. Toby Keith, he looked like a skeleton, dude. Really? Was, wow. I watched an interview. Is that the, the Tom Segura is always making fun of? No. No, that's Garth Brooks. Uh, Garth Brooks is a serial killer. Okay. Yeah. How old was Toby Keith? Oh, Garth Brooks is uh, a country singer. He is a country singer. But, he also kills but people. Tom Segura broke, broke the news that he's a serial killer. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's cancel culture. Uh, Tom Tom Segura sent his, um, some of his employees <laughs> to a Garth Brooks con concert, yeah. and they like had a sign there holding up. It said, "I love you, Garth." And as soon as like the jumbotron cut to them, they dropped that sign. And the second sign said, "Where are the bodies?" <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> so it's dude, dude, it's dude, a running joke, and that's it's, it's good. catching traction. How People, long ago did that happen? Oh, dude, like Ray, last this year. This is my homework. But uh, where are the bodies? It's gotten so bad that so they're actually good. following Garth Brooks' tour. Wow. And finding murders that happen on the night cities in those cities, and they're like linking it together. And Garth Brooks might actually be a serial killer. That's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, he's about this is like the birds things. aren't real thing. It just like takes <laughs> yeah. the smallest shred of a doubt. And they're like, I don't know, dude. Those could be fucking government little cameras flying they're, they're around. Drones. They're drones. They're drones. Yeah. No, yeah, that's there's... our new podcast hashtag. Uh, hashtag Garth Brooks is a serial killer. Yeah. Dude, I'm jumping on that. <laughs> the birds <laughs> have eyes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to like Garth Brooks like tour bus stop outside. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> 
So do you think Garth Garth Brooks is a murderer? I don't even know who he is. I just know he's a country singer. So you think he's a murderer? I don't know. You heard it first here. Uh, Urban Race is CEO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Canceled. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know who. I know he like. I know he's a country singer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, it's interesting, man. Because like, I love the Two Bears One Cave podcast, and so I've been follow like following that for two years. Yeah, it's Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. Yeah, and um. On like the on on one of them, they talked about his interviews and Garth Brooks. It's very. So I have a brother with autism. So it some of his interviews is very um, on the spectrum. Like he doesn't know how to interact with people properly. Okay. And it's an, an intriguing. So he just kills him instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So a lot of make his, him feel like he's murdered. Yeah, he lurks him right there, dude. Yeah. You know, it's easier to work on yourself, Garth. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's counseling or like read a book or. Like, listen to an audiobook yeah, or something while you're Little extra advice. Dang, bro. He should have been in our room when we got broken into. Oh, for real? Yeah. yeah I take that risk any day of the week. I don't know if the beef would, though. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. They're fucking beef. Well, at, at that point, he could be like, what are the odds there'd be two serial killers? Oh. You I'm know? Dead, bro, yeah. I'm See? dead. You want my will? <laughs> Dang. Like, you have a will? Give me my dad. No, I don't have a will yet. I probably you should. should write a will. I should yeah. probably have. Do you have one? Yeah. yeah, for sure. Do you have one? It's pretty easy to get notarized. Right? No. Okay, well, we're younger than he is. So, yeah, 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 Evan's old. Yeah. I'm also We've made that joke Professionally before. stupid. Oh, you know, you're 31, right? 31. I'll be 32 in April. And then early I'm birthday. getting new balances next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Corvette. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. What's a broke old man get? A broke old man get? I got a school bus for my birthday. Shoot, those, ah, cor- those Corvettes are almost cheaper than 350Zs now, so it could, could happen. What about a Miata? Is that like an old man car? Is that like... Uh, it's shifted actually. It's more of like it used to be like that was my first car actually. Miata, was a Miata yeah, mine too. Yeah, a great car, really. Yeah, thank you, bro. What up, dude? Miata Bros. <laughs> hey, we should have a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Miata Bros. MX Five. <laughs> Speaking of which, you really need a drift car. Oh like, my really god, bad. dude! I'm like, slowly piecing time. my problem together. So I have. Uh, a trailer that is missing an axle that will one day hold the trailer. Yes, yeah, so you can go. He's like, I have the keys. Yeah, <laughs> right. I have, yeah. The tires. I have a shifter. I have like I a little shifting ball. Yeah, yeah, see, I have the Mustang wheels. We're, we're gonna do that. this one thing I told him at the last drift event. We were helping out with the ride-alongs, and I was like, man, careless you know, car. if we had a car, mm-hmm. these dudes are charging. I'm telling the boss. Bucks. The boss not listening, dude. I'm every Monday meeting. Boss? I'm like drift car. What's up? Who's the boss? I- <laughs> Oh, so, Sophie, come on, yeah, man. She keeps vetoing it. Yeah. I keep, I keep, <laughs> he vetoing it. That was cool. Sorry, I, I like keep that pushing word. for the. I keep pushing for the Corvette. Right. Evans wanted to get that G thirty five. So we, because he's looking at it, the business mindset. He's like, dang, forty dollars ride along. We can put three people in there. That's one hundred and twenty bucks for one lap. All right, Mister Hoonigan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that must sell to a, a nail polish that company. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I may or may not put people in the back of my Mustang whenever I do. They're just like hitting their head. Yeah, yeah, they love it though. They actually, so. charge extra. It's more yeah. than a drone. No, it's, it's like Spirit Airlines, just per seat, bro. Yeah, make them just fight get you, for like the seatbelt. Just yeah. get you some Sparco <laughs> harnesses and bolt them to the roof, and so they're laying on their back, strapped into the top. It's like a bungee cord. <laughs> they're just you just have them hold the three sixty GoPro. You know, like, you got it, like it, like. Adventure rides, like seatbelts, are pretty fucking janky. Like, you're about to go on a ride, it's just like a, a universal thing that's just like clipped, and you're like, oh, there's dude. a lot of boot. Like, I went to the Probably. state fair like a year or two ago. Dude. So, like, if they can get away with that, and I like went fucking up in the air like 15 stories, and yeah, you can definitely like, you fuck your seatbelts in the back, bro. I do state not fair ride roller put, coasters. Did you I see stay the off. The video of the state fair ride where it, it's one of the ones where it like takes you up and, and you're going sideways. And it, they didn't strap it down properly, so it started rocking back and forth. So you had Fuck 20 me. people holding the front of the attraction. Was this in America? Oh, yeah. I feel like, okay, if this was in America. It's probably in like, South Carolina or something. No, I was going to say, like, Iowa. Some Iowa. Stupid, it, was, it, was it was one of those like carnivals that. where, like, you, you try to sue I them. I thought we strapped then, it down. He's like, that was your job, Donnie. Name it down. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, trying right? to sue them. They're like, okay, bring us paperwork tomorrow. But they're gone in two hours. No shit, next town. dude. Some <laughs> no gypsy way. stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a fucking shitty teddy bear just, like, rolling across the parking lot. Yeah, they're like, oh, the, the, the dude that only had three teeth and, yeah. and was missing an eye is like. That's all of them. Never worked here, man. Yeah. No, you're just talking about. Really, he like puts in a perfect set of teeth in a suit and he walks away. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a pretty good prank though. Like get off the ride and then leave a couple of nuts and bolts on the seat for the next person. Oh, yeah. oh bro. Oh, there's one guy. Dude, on... that would freak me the fuck yeah. out. There's one guy on okay. TikTok that's been going viral. He he hosts. It's the ride where they take you up to the top and they just drop you. Yeah. And it only has one seat belt. He's like, oh man, guys. He pushes the button for the timer to start to drop. He's like, oh man, I forgot the I forgot the shoulder straps. And like, oh, <laughs> oh my god. He goes to walk towards him. And they're like, what? And they grab him. As soon as they grab, it just drops them. 
Dude, if someone, like, shits like, their that pants that and throws up all over that ride, that guy needs to clean and it up. It's, it's always so the manliest-looking guy that lets out the highest-pitched <laughs> scream going down. Yeah, it's bro. so good. Oh, man. But I'm that afraid of high savage, scream, He'd dude. get me in a heartbeat. I don't do That's roller coasters. Pretty, yeah, but that, I don't do them. that would emotionally scar me. Actually. I'll do roller yeah. coasters if it's, like, at a Six Flags, but I don't do them at carnivals anymore. Seen too I'll many them parking lot carnivals. Yeah, yeah, I've seen too dude. many sketchy things go down. This used to be a TJ Maxx. Let's bring it back to that, <laughs> dude. It should not be fucking <laughs> buying my raffle tickets yeah. next to a rundown Starbucks. <laughs> I like drifting. I'll stick to drifting. I'll do a hard You gotta limit sideways. the stupid things we do in life. Oh, yeah. You know, like I'm cats so have nine lives, and like after the eighth one, they're just like, oh my head. We don't have nine. We got like two and a half. I don't know, dude. You I'm, got four. I've been playing Please. fucking dice for a minute. Yeah. Hey, I just got insurance, guys. February first, six years. I'm trying to, I'm trying to milk that. <laughs> Slow clap, yeah, Shia yeah. LaBeouf. I know how expensive that is, dude. I'm adulting, man. I can wipe my own ass, <laughs> dude. I, who's it through? Is it uh, Edna. It's a government program. Not Familia. No. Okay. Or Amex. Uh, I can show you the card. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. No, you don't, I'm not. I'm not the officer. You don't need to show me. No, you're good. Yeah. I'm fucking proud, dude. I want to show everybody. I show my neighbor. <laughs> I just knocked it over. I was like, hey, you home? I just figured this. there'd be like the Amax for like health insurance. You know what Amax is, right? Like, you, watch my yeah. shit's like fake and it's like not. I just got like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I yeah. call it like the, the general. It's El General. Right? That's one of the other things he added to his dating profile. That's right? his last picture on the profile. Is his <laughs> health 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 yeah. Low key flex. <laughs> I got health care. <laughs> that's so true. And Which like, part? All right, uh, the, it's it's a it's a flex. You have health insurance. Like okay, so for anyone that is uh, stupid and is an entrepreneur and doesn't work for somebody, right? You, you don't you you have to pay for your own health insurance. When you go work for a company, they usually have a company policy. You don't like this topic, do you? I She's like push me away. Yeah, she, she doesn't like this topic. <laughs> it's tough. She's but, like hey, we're we're supposed to still be living in the box. You're, you're letting people think outside. Sensitive subject. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like you have to pay for your own health insurance, or you can choose to, right? Or wait, so my question is- I was independent for over five years. Are you still going to the chicken doctor now? Fuck yeah. I honestly, I'm just saving this for like big things. Okay, it's so like when you lose your leg by- Yeah, yeah, joke. well hypothetically. I'm be honest, man, I was riding trails the other day on my dirt bike, and I was like, you know, if I was to break my arm, it would be hypothetical, I'm a little bit more prepared. So I was happy. Yeah, I still go, I still go to my chicken doctor. He's just easy. There's like zero paperwork. Like, I literally booked an appointment with him. Like, what's your first name? Evan? And she's like, okay. And she hung up. I was like, you don't need, like, a number? Or... Are you saying chicken? Oh, Chicken dude. doctor. Oh, you're still chicken stuck doctor? with the chicken part. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm just making sure. I'm just so, making sure. Uh, I had right. a doctor that, like, when I worked in restaurants, like, they would be, like, the go-to guy that if you don't have insurance, you go to this one guy. His name's Dr. Griffin. Um, super nice guy. But the, the my joke is, like, I guess he, like, literally is, like, he might as well be, like, a veterinarian in the morning, like, working on humans later in the day. Because, like, uh, shout out, sorry if you're watching, dude. Thank you for your 15 <laughs> years. Like but, dude, it is the most rink dink fucking office you've ever been in your life. If you're in, like, one of the private rooms and someone needs to do an eye exam, they stop you in the private room. Like, hey, put your pants back on, Danzy. Fucking Carl needs to do his eye exam. They, like, open the exam room, which is, like, you in a, a fucking walk-in closet, which is, like, where you're getting whatever checked out. And some guy's now, like, E, F... Like, so, like, the joke is, I wouldn't be fucking surprised if I was getting examined. Like, there's a chicken, like, walking down the hallway, and he's, like, chasing after it. Yeah, dude. The dude is legit, like, talked about, he used to, like, neuter pigs and goats and stuff, and, like... Oh, you're in the right place, then. Yeah, no shit. I was like, yeah, because yeah. I fucking eat hay and lick my own ass. Well, you gotta be neutered, so... Well, yeah, I thought about that, but apparently yeah. it's different nowadays. I found out that the uh, U.S. is the only country where you can't sell your testicles for $30,000. So. You'd sell them? You looked into that? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a guy yeah. in Mexico that's $30,000 $30, per testicle, and then like. So you're selling like the inside piece, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. $100,000 <laughs> $100, for a kidney. And I'm Dude, like, what, what can I live without so that we can buy this drift car? Right? You know? Because we so, gotta buy the car, then we gotta buy the trailer, and then we gotta do some I'm not trying to be weird, bus. but then, like, what can they do with one? Are they just giving it to another dude that needs a nut? We're getting deep. I don't care what they do with it for $30,000. Really? He, he's I'll he's be, saying the business have, side of it. I'll have oh, my shit. drift car like, and my trailer right. and my diesel swap bus and I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Walking with a lip? Like, what's wrong with him? I, I'm sold his left nut for everything you see. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Do you see that smile? I mean, you already have a kit. Like, what else do you need? Do, now do you're we, just flexing Do we on qualify the world. that above or below OnlyFans? Since I am technically selling my body. Are you Oof. recording and posting online, though? No. Then so, it's not OnlyFans. So would it be above or below? It's only for sale. Oh. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. 
But like, all I'm trying to say is, dude, they're flipping your nuts. So, so if they're like, paying this is another you, topic that you right? don't need to talk about. Expensive. If they're paying you 30k for your nut, they're probably selling it for 60 to then buyer. 100. So they're like flipping your nuts. There's some like guy in Dubai that's like eating it because he thinks it gives him better testosterone. Oh my god, you're probably not wrong, dude. Dude, that's just like, dude, they probably. they do shit like that. Like wealthy that's, people, they do it with cow over. balls. I think you think of China, not Dubai. Is it like, but what about like stem cells? Wasn't that like a thing for uh, like stem cells from babies uh, or something? I want to say it's China. They the reason that like they're killing rhinos so much is because the ground up rhino horn is supposed to give you a uh, bigger, bigger, bigger penis. Oh, dude, so. I tried it twice. It definitely worked. <laughs> dude, I had a fucking Next horn out for yeah. That's why anytime you go into yeah. a gas station, the, the, the dick pills are called Rhino XL. Oh, really? There's, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude. Bro, okay, I swear I've never tried it, those motherfuckers look like a Lego set. Like, I don't know what homeless guy is swallowing a fucking pill that's that big. <laughs> Every time I see those, dude, what kind of high are you chasing, bro? I I tried getting fucking old. I take vitamins and shit now, and I'm trying to, like, add more in the mix. And, like, each time I add another vitamin, I'm like, this is a pain in the ass. I got to take, like, five of these every fucking day. I can't imagine that shit that those guys are buying from truck stops. We're scared, Danzy. We have six years, and then we re reach his level. Fucking yeah. disgusting. Do I wake up to dude. pee in the middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> fucking, dude. What's the next topic? Let's we'll segue off this. Being old. I'm just, yeah. What size your New Balances? I'll get you a pair. These are New Balances? No, I'm just, what size would you be in New Balances? Uh, that way you and Evan can have a matching set yeah, dude, to go with the Mm, Probably. We should do an event where everybody has to dress like old men in like a Corvette car meet for old guys, like New Balances, no, I'll bring the shirts tucked pills. in. <laughs> oh, dude, I want them right now. That shit's dope. <laughs> I'll go buy some George tomorrow and dude. I will do a stunt show. And How many George's pockets can I have song? on my shorts? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I'm talking about like the pocket for the hammer, but it's like you don't ever have a hammer on you. I'm going to Old Navy for sure. Go cop some life insurance real quick. I'm insured, dude. I feel old. Life insurance and health insurance are two different things. Oh, oops. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm new to the insurance game. You'll have to explain it to me. <laughs> Life insurance would be what you would have to get so you could leave Sophie with thousands. How do you feel about that? Sophie? She has thousands of careless stickers to retire on. How, how do you feel about that? She's getting a putter. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. She, she's probably hilarious. slinging for, for more than $2 a pop. <laughs> That's awesome. She licked it. All right. She Dude, that's where, that's where we're spoke. starting the GoFundMe. She spoke. Any, uh, any wrap-up points, uh, hip-hop points, and you want to... Spit a few bars, uh, rap. Do you have any charities you'd oh, like to dude. shout out? Um, <laughs> books you read from Oprah, Oprah's book club that have uh, resonated in your in your mind. Tattoos you're gonna get. Man, man. Vehicles uh, you're purchasing. Mm, I got one for you guys. Just quotes you read today. I got, I got something. Let's let's all go real quick. Where do you want to be in ten years from now? Paint the picture that you want. I'm, I already know, and you can call any of the guys on our team. And they'll tell you right now where I'm gonna be at. Dancy, go first. Big foul zero. Let me go last. Let me give that a little thought to that one. Okay. Shh, you steal mine, I'll whip that ass. <laughs> I know where Sophie wants to be. She wants to be at this window. You're staring at that cat. You want to go first? I think you should go first. Aircraft carrier. <laughs> Dude, I'm getting the aircraft carrier. 40th Explain birthday, this. Explain Facebook this. profile, I will be in a lawn chair, fishing off the side of my freaking aircraft carrier, dude. That's what's up. Because when shit hits the fan, That's me and like 20,000 of my closest enemies... Y'all included, obviously, get to jump on my floating island and we'll just float away from all the mess. That's what's up. Everybody gets like a freaking a, like stack of rooms, dude. There'll be a huge kitchen, gardens. We can host drift events up top. Dude, sold. Well, dude, then Uber sold. Air, man. You could uh, fly in other people's drift cars from across the ocean and stuff to, to make it to some of our events. And oh, those, yeah. dudes, those dudes pay a lot of money to ship their cars places. Dude. You know, most billionaires have yachts. I feel like that's a flex you want a billionaire. Yo, yeah, yachts are dude. for like, what do you, own a 7-Eleven, dude? Get an aircraft carrier. Yeah. Bro. You can buy old ones yeah. that have been like demilitarized from countries. Psh, easy. The hardest part sense. is it takes like a fucking village to run them, but that's, I have a few years to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah, you got 10. Subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I got 8. You got yeah. 10. No, this is a 10-year plan, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, my goal is I have to do it by 40. Yeah. So I'm kind of rounding my time down. That's what's up. That's what's up. What about you? What are your, what's your uh, 10 year goal? Well, first, so you'll be like, what, 23? Uh, <laughs> so 17. No, I'm 25. <laughs> so I'll be almost the same age as you have. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to take a nap. It's kind of past my bed. So yeah. Is it dark outside? Yeah, no, no kidding, bro. Uh, well, first off, you're the most disruptive person in this group, Sophie. My, first off, I want to say, uh, write this down. I want to do this, like, literally 10 years to the day. I want to do this again with, you, with you guys. So no dying. Knock on the damn wood. <laughs> yeah. 
okay. You gotta stay alive, bro. I was stay fake IKEA. Hold on. Yeah. So I, I want to do this again in ten years. Um, I'm down with that. Besides that, man, I think I think uh, on a on a more serious note. I think the air. I think the aircraft carrier is pretty serious. I think that's serious. But that's like a serious thing. Yeah, that's for that's, sure. That's super serious. But for me, on a serious note, I think uh, I really want to accomplish the milestone of like urban racing, uh, having its own track. Like I, I want to have a massive property built by enthusiasts for enthusiasts, not just car enthusiasts, all kinds of enthusiasts. Like if it has a motor and it has wheels, brother, that's what this property is for. That's what I want to build. I'm gonna make it happen. Hopefully within five years, but. Yeah, man, that's my 10-year plan. You can do so, it. Dude, that'd be awesome, five. and that's something we've kicked around, too, that need, like like we said, needs needs to be done. Yeah, We got absolutely. a buddy that has a concrete company, so we got really? to hook up on that. Awesome. Shout out to Noah. Cool, man. Freaking Noah, I love that dude. We got yeah. 10 years to hit him up, so. I guess, I guess I get his phone number now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say, hey, man, got five bucks in my checking account, but, you know. So, yeah, that's where I'm at. What about you, Denzi? Man, dude, I don't know. I'd like to, because I'd have a 10-year-old kid at that point so i'm really hoping to be able to now who's the old fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I'm, I'm just really looking forward to see what what that entails because um to see what path he decides to take because i love animals i have crazy pets i don't know if you know i have a crocodile and i've had like a bunch of crazy pets before he's the one you took to the or he took you to the yeah right for sure. sure i was yeah like, me and travis yeah, were yeah. definitely the i was main. trying to keep up with them like which one's poisonous because i would not be near <laughs> it can you bring the crocodile to the next meet can you do that you definitely might, you might be able to make something happen as long as it's warm enough. Yeah. Sorry, continue. continue. Yeah, but so yeah, like, I love dude, animals. Five bucks a poop. Dude, yeah. just, yeah. Yeah, five, you tape five bucks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I can. Can we put on the crazy cart? No, he just puts an apple on it and just sits it up. How big is it? <laughs> can you put it in the crazy <laughs> cart? Like, I'm sorry. I still need to know your 10 year goal, but then. I'm just trying to make ideas. sure that we're yeah. not doing like having to worry about game wardens pulling up with animal cruelty things. Oh, like, it's fake. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Movie set, movie set. How movie big set. is it, though? Well, he's just under three feet, so he's about three feet. That's a big crock. Uh, You'd be he's, surprised he's, the last five-year-old lost a hand. Yeah, he's big enough that if he gets a hold of my hand, he could probably pop off a Wait, so he bit a hand? He has a record? No, no, no. If, he, if he were to get a hold of my hand, like, he, he might be able to pop off a finger. Does he like, so is he like an indoor or outdoor crock? He's an indoor crock. So you keep him inside, like, your living room? Do you, like, let him out oh, in the morning in your backyard? Oh, I'll get him out and interact with him every once in a while, but his name's Steve. Okay, I'm just talking to I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. His name is Steve, you know, R.I.P. Steve. Steve Irwin. Yeah, the crocodile hunter Steve Irwin, man. Oh, okay. So, yeah. That's fair. Yeah, no, I, fair. I love animals. I love music. I have a guitar. I love motorcycles. And I love cars. So, like, anything that I keep joking with Bailey and my son could be like, hey, I want to pet giraffe. And then I could be like, I know a guy in San Antonio that sells giraffes. So, like, we're going to get that tomorrow. So, I'm curious to see what he goes into. I think it'd be really cool if he got into um, freestyle motocross. Okay. So, like, I'm super... Yeah. Just whatever he wants that. to get into, though, like, I'm I'm going to just jump all in and we'll just see where we're at. So, like, I have no plans. I'm waiting on him to see what we want to do. I'd like to still be involved with stunt riding and the drift, like, do hopefully be have a drift car by that point. But Can I just mention real quick the part where you said whatever, he, like, you want to help him pursue what, what, what he wants to pursue, right? Oh, he said that. Dude, so much respect for that because, like, I know myself and, like, a lot of people, a lot of kids in this world, like, Parents have agendas for their kids. They want them to be X, Y, or Z. Like that's such a bad way to raise a kid. So props to you, sir. Oh yeah. For like, and I, and I know if my parents passions. could have, because my parents had four kids. My older brother passed away, but I gotcha. know that they weren't able to. They gave me everything that they could. Yeah. So that's I'm hoping to be in a position to give yeah. my son everything that I can and to help him with his passions and and really do that. Um, I'm not gonna do what my mom did though. I'm. We're, we're already working with getting him uh, on a Strider bike so that he can be riding the little 50cc bike within a uh, and be a two year old. So let's um, go. But yeah, dude, I'm just so excited for that. I'm just ready to. I have no idea what my 10 years looks like. I'm just trying to make sure that it's something. I'm, I'm passionate about this, so I hope that he shares the same passion with the stunt riding and and the motorcycles. But if he doesn't, that's cool, and then we'll just go with whatever he wants to do, and I'll still just try my best to be involved with the stunt scene and the drift scene so love it just go from there that was a good answer you want to, you want to try it again or i know i want to be honest dude there. i kind of regret going first after this i was like <laughs> really started out strong and i just lost momentum fast <laughs> you brought up the kid and like the good dad thing parenting and you were really business-minded i'm just like i want to fucking have a lollipop 
Um, That's a big lollipop. I don't know, man. Now I feel bummed. Uh, 10 years. <laughs> uh, so I'll be old as fuck. Probably be close to death. <laughs> <laughs> No, right, I'll get a lost hope on the lady right. too. There was no lady in, in his ten year point. Right, I'll be alone, <laughs> probably sixteen hundred pounds on There's a always gilf, bro. show. There's always gilfs. Gilfs, yeah. you think so? Oh yeah. Well, let's go. Do you know what a gilf is? Uh, <laughs> I thought no. Well, instead of a mom, it'd be G. a grandma. Oh, it's, no, God. it's 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 G. I love the fish. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm confused. We, we just have dirty minds. Yeah. No. Gabe, Gabe was going PG with it. G, I love the fish. Go. I don't speak Spanish. Maybe I need another beer. <laughs> Can you say it in Spanish? No. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. So whenever you're I still say he's Mexican? No, yeah, just kidding. Whenever I you say told me. Spanish, dude, the funniest thing is I can sell you paint and hamburgers in Spanish fluently. Because I was a manager at McDonald's whenever I was 18. And then oh, I worked damn. at Sherman Williams That's selling cool. paint. And I learned it. But, yeah, I, I have to learn how to say everything else. My grandma didn't speak English. Like, That's what it is, English. by the way. It's not your grandpa. <laughs> it's the grandma. Uh, yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. Grandmas yeah. love the fish, yeah, brother. Dude. Hey, you know, she's got a good retirement plan or something. Sorry. Continue. Dude, my grandma's crazy. You know, fun, fun fact, my parents had to bail my grandma out of jail. Fuck what yeah. did she do, bro? So they found my, my uh, dad's dad okay. was cheating on my grandma. And she, they told her one time, hey, if you want to catch him cheating, he's at this gas station with so and so. Oh, shit. So they pull up, up, and my grandma. They gassed her up at the my, gas station. <laughs> my grandma didn't beat the crap out of the lady. She beat the crap out of my dad's dad and got put in jail. Fuck yeah. And so my. She my, should go to jail for that. Oh, no. She, that's that's, he, street, he that's street street lost. But yeah, no, so fun fact my, my grandma got, got went to jail, so. Fuck yeah. Hey, she, next time she be podcast. smiling like in her fucking, in her mug shot, <laughs> right? She's got blood. She like does like that. If I were you. <laughs> Mexican old tooth. <laughs> got the grill. She's if like, I can I get my gold tooth back? I would totally find her mug shot, print it out, put on a t-shirt and wear it. Dude, dude that is an amazing idea. Gma, you yeah, know. That's good, grandma bro. on the block, dude. Yeah. Thanks for grandma, dude. That's amazing. I would sell that picture to Careless to make a... We could Dude, make a, a mugshot t-shirt. I, I love it. I love it. Most Careless grandma out there. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Let's do it. Well, uh, so we got our event coming up next Saturday. Yes, sir. Grapevine, Texas, Classic Cars. Wow, you broke that? Nope. Manager. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Sophie at? Hey. Oh, she's chilling. Finally. She's getting tired. Now that we're winding up. Yeah, uh, so we got our event in Grapevine next Saturday, the 17th. And we have yes, Mopar coming up, and then May 4th will be your event at Texas Motor Speedway? Yes, sir. Heck yeah. Our event. Let's take over I think the world. When this air, I think this will our air team. while the event's happening. Right. Which, May 4th? Oh, prior. Uh, next sun, Saturday. Okay, yeah, cool. So this will be airing cool. right after. So we actually had a great time. Urban Racing through a hell right. of an event. I was so um, excited. It was with amazing. Everything. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah, it, 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 it Monday yeah. after it happened. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell of an event. Had a great time. There was yeah. such a great turnout. No so injuries. So many cars and so much crazy carton. And I really want to see the crocodile out there again. Oh yeah. Or maybe yeah. make that happen. <laughs> you really think we could do that? Yeah. All I gotta do is electrical tape his mouth so that there's no <laughs> no missing fingers from the event. Take it out of context, please. Can we get like pink electrical tape so it's like kind of it's like different? You know what I mean? You don't expect a crocodile. It's like that. It's like that. I don't know if y'all ever played this game. You had to. Well, actually, you can't play this game anymore because Walmart's all self-checkout. But you had to go to Walmart whenever you're in high school and, and buy three things that would make the cashier question what you were doing. So it was always like rope, electrical oh, tape, and a yeah. shovel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah Justin Bieber poster, lube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. I Gotta bought that lube. twice yesterday. Why? Is that, is that weird? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now you'll never catch the dirty looks from the cashiers again because Walmart's only self-checkout. <laughs> but they have <laughs> I swear to God, I needed condoms, bleach, and sandpaper. <laughs> I just have one more question on the crocodile. So, like, this, the, you, it hangs out in your house. Yes. Where, like, which part of your house? Living room. It's like, literally right in between our our kitchen table and and where we sit. And it doesn't bite anything. Just, it just. He's so in a very large aquarium, but I'm working on building a pond. Oh, the he's only in an aquarium. Right now is the